Oh, let's talk to uh, actor and Man City fan, Kel Spellman. Hey, Kel. Hey, Kel. Morning, gents. How are we? Yeah, very good. Thanks, Kel. Very we're, good. We're good. Are you are you panicking? Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I don't think it's panic stations as of yet. But there's, I mean, there's there's definitely concern. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's been a funny kind of. I think start to the season, the the sport in Lisbon defeat for me. I feel like going to the games, everyone was kind of saying that that had been coming. I think we'd been quite lucky throughout the start of the season. You know, when you look at. Brentford and Ipswich and even Southampton and Wolves, um, you know, they 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 really kind of challenged us and we kind of managed to get the win. But the sport in Lisbon defeat wasn't a surprise for me. Um, but I think, you know, injuries have played a big part and you've lost the best player in the world in Rodri. So we were always going to struggle. But I feel, you know, we get a couple of players back and I'd like to think they'll put it right. And you can't doubt Pep in this squad for what they've done over the last nine years. Yeah, we've, you mentioned Rodri. People were surprised. People were were saying about him winning um, the best player in the world, the Ballon d'Or. They were surprised at it. They were like, well, what does he do? Are we seeing what he does now because Man City without him are losing games. I mean, completely. I think, um, and you know, it's funny I'm using this reference, but I think Paul Scholes said it. I think if you've, if you're a football fan and you know you know a little bit about football, then you, you'll understand that Rodri was so deserving of the Ballon yeah. d'Or. For me, to be honest, he could, probably could have won it the, the year we won the treble. I think that was the the year he went nearly 64, 65 games. I think unbeaten club and country and we know he's how did Pep describe him he's almost the metronome for Manchester City mm. and um, any team is going to feel it when you do lose the best player in the world I mean I think the, the the conversations around him not deserving to win it I think as well were were so um, wrong to be honest I think he was he was fully deserving and, and we are we are feeling that but you know you trust in the likes of Kovacic has tried to fill the gap and, you know, yeah. try and maybe put Rico in there. I'd like to see Stones in there maybe when he's fit. So it's funny, I was saying to my dad, he's he's one man, but you almost need two players to be able to even try and get close to what Rodri can do. And we, we're definitely feeling the loss of him. And you, you, you do have to remember that we have lost the best player in the world. Is um is it nostalgic for you and your dad to lose a couple of games? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, do you know, nice. I remember this <laughs> sense of comfort to it. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. it just well, it, it normally like, listen. We, we, it's nice to give everyone else a chance, isn't it? I was, do you know what? It was so funny. I, I do a little bit of work for City, and I, I, I said on the show, I think after the the second defeat, I said, I remember there was a season when me, me, our kid, and my dad, we went to the home every home game, and I didn't see City win. We, did, I mean, we didn't even score at home until the last wow. game of the season. So you know, <laughs> the whole we, season. We, <laughs> no, what? there was a whole when, season. Whenever, whenever you went, whenever you went. Whenever we went, I don't. I think it was until right, the last okay, game, right, the okay. last game. We, I didn't see us score a goal at home oh, for the whole season. Brilliant. So brilliant. You know, we, we, we're used to it. We've been there, and, and actually, I think in a way, these are the things that I think could almost help you kick on if you get through that, and it just humbles you a little bit. Then hopefully, it could almost, you know, revitalize the season, I guess. But it is a bit nostalgic. It's, I think it's nice for the old school City fans as well. They go, "This is what we used to remember." <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just gonna say. <laughs> Like, obviously, it's nice to win Champions Leagues and league, league titles and league titles. But has any goal felt better than that goal you that saw one, yeah, that yeah. day when yeah. you hadn't seen a goal all season? I don't know if you can remember <laughs> who scored it, like Terry <laughs> Terry Feeling or Michelle Vonk or someone. Yeah, yeah, that goal must it. have felt unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's it. And I think, is, especially when you're a kid as well, I think... He, he, it's kind of almost just just reminds you that you're just there to watch the football and support your team through through good or bad. You know, you're not gonna. This will pass with Pep. Do you know what mm. I mean? So, um, you know, it, it, I don't know the Aguero goal though. That 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 oh, that yeah, can't well, be yeah. top to be I honest. I guess that probably was quite. That probably was quite, was quite good, good. Thinking back, <laughs> yeah, thinking back. Uh, yeah, Brighton, that was I better Brighton... than Ian, Ian Brightwell sticking one in. <laughs> yeah, in the last short, short, when he finished seventeen. A little, a little Sean yeah. go to toe poke. It's, it's close, <laughs> but Aguero just trumps it. <laughs> uh, I thought Brighton looked good against Liverpool last week for, for uh, forty-five minutes at least, and they're, and they're, particularly their midfield looked good. I thought. Do you think you'll have enough today, though, Cal? Do you, honestly, gents, I, I, I really don't know. I think, first and foremost, I, I think I love the way Brighton Football Club have, are, are run. And mm. for me, that you know, up there is a, probably one of the best clubs in the Premier League. I do feel at the moment 
If you do go at City, we're, we're likely to concede. So I do think we'll concede. I'd like to think maybe the big man might find a bit of form, get a little brace. So we could we could maybe nick it. But I'm, 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 I'm not too confident going into this game, which is rare for me to <laughs> say, especially under Pep. So, yeah, we'll have yeah. to see. Are you um? Uh, there was that moment in the Fulham game where Carl Walker and Adama Traore had a race and, and oh, Traore lovely. won, and then it was sort of I can't remember the guy who retired Gary Neville who, who just thought I can't play anymore, <laughs> and and uh, like I don't know if Carl Walker went hang on this has never happened before or like it may, maybe once and he thought oh because he's not looking quite the same is he and he's what thirty four now for a player who for whom pace is so important and for yeah. how City play right because you defend high it's a bit like Spurs and Van der Ven right yeah, if you yeah. ha- you, you need someone who is that quick and that good like he's he's marked Mbappe out of football matches before Carl Walker are you slightly yes. worried about his form and his pace. Yeah, I mean, a slightly. What what I have loved though through that is the the you know the rise of Rico Lewis. Um, you know, and I think you, you can see the the trust that Pep's got in him. I think I did read something though that I think before that game, um, I don't. I think Walker had only trained almost maybe done one training session. Uh, so okay. Fair enough. I think. Listen, I, I I do feel I agree. He's not probably looked like the Kyle Walker we've seen over the last few seasons. But um, I wouldn't quite write him off yet. But as I say. Seeing Rico Lewis come into the fold and uh, watching him kind of bloom has, has, has been a joy, really. And, you know, he's a lad from Manchester, another academy product. And, um, you know, he's he's definitely filled the gap. But uh, Walker's another one, irreplaceable, like you say, for the pace and particularly for the way we play. But I'd, I think he'll, he'll come, he, he, he will come back. But, you know, we can't shy away that he's definitely not looked his best, especially positioning for me. It's just more, yeah. I don't know, it's almost like he... Because he has his pace, he thinks he kind of maybe doesn't do the, the finer details all the time. And I think that's that's kind of where he's been caught out. So, no, we'll, we'll see with Walker, but I won't write him off just yet. <laughs> no, Brilliant, Kel. No. Well, I think I speak... I think I speak for all the neutrals to say I really love you to lose about 15 in a row. But <laughs> I, I, I wish you the best of luck this afternoon. No, nice one, gents. And I'm, do you know what? I'm away with um, Jack O'Connell at the moment, who said to say hello, boys, and up the oh, Rams. Oh, that's uh, nice. That yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lovely bloke. Oh, send him my best. All the best to Jack. Uh, cheers, Cal. <laughs> Make it easy. Long, thanks, thanks, mate. Cheers. Uh, Kel Spellman there, uh, actor and Man City fan. And yeah, 5.30 kickoff for Brighton versus Manchester City. We'll do some Liverpool next. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.